Life Sponsors 10-Year Tip with Gary Dibley. Well, good evening. It is Monday night. It is nine o'clock and it is time to tin your tip with myself, Gary Dibley, and the ever capable mod master that is a mark. Um, yes, another exciting week, another busy week. Um, you can probably see from the bench, it's, it's that side, wrong hand again every time. Um, you can see by there, it, it's been a messy one. Um, and I do finally have um, full on wood um, for the first time during a show. Um, and it's here. I, I, we finished the damn thing. Um, yes, it's taken a while, um, and now it's done. It's it's a nice little weighty thing. Um, but we're going to be running through obviously uh, our finishing steps of that, um, and in the process, we we introduce uh, a little a little mini oki, um, which was made from another another mod which I was doing while I was editing. Um, nice little thing. Uh, so I've got less time than a man with not many minutes to live left um i've got a lot of stuff to to get in tonight um and i'm gonna wick into our first little video right now and i'll pop back very shortly after these right so we're back for a another week and uh, and this week we are finally going to be wiring up our, our little uh, little lump of wood mod a um, couple of things i need to check first and, and i've done some stuff in advance um essentially um you can see that that's finished up nice. I've, I've applied some of the uh, some of the wax now, and uh, it's looking good. But in advance, I've just uh, just made sure I've routed out a little bit more on my channels for my wires. Um, what I noticed is where I drilled down inside here for the atty, um, I've had to take back the atomizer connection ever so slightly by just dremeling off half of that connection. Otherwise, when I inserted that in. Um, that would have trapped uh, the wire that was coming up from the from the switch, um, and possibly caused it to uh, you know come off or, or cut and short or whatever. Um, so that's been cut back uh, in readiness. Uh, what I've also done is our tube that's going to drop down inside. Now essentially, where I'm running these, uh, I've got the two holes down there for the wires. Um, this is recessed and cut out to fit essentially over the top of those wires when that tube drops down inside. Um, you know, it won't interrupt the battery. He's hoping, uh, but it's there just just so I can uh, a get a feed out from my my POS connection going in, um, and b it'll it'll give a bit of uh, play. And also, it's given me because is th this is a a chrome body, I will be able to solder my neg wire um, on the the base of this cutout here. Um, that's going to then run up inside one of the channels. So it literally come off midpoint, run up inside the channel, um, and uh, and pop up through to the attic connection. So uh, I've discovered that I needed to do that. Um, also, what I've done is, is taken a, uh, a, a, if you like, a, a battery um, terminal, and I've just narrowed that down ever, ever so slightly, um, so I can drop this in the bottom. Now, one of the things I'm going to have to do first, um, essentially, is to uh, just take you out ever so slightly. Um, I need to drop this button. Well, first of all, I'm just going to position my tube down inside to make sure that, that everything goes in where it needs to be. And this is still nice and tight, and that's leaving me my channels there. What I'm going to do is drop my battery nipple down inside, um, basically because I just want to position that up centrally where it's going to be going, down inside the mod, down inside there. Um, and I want to drop my battery in. reason for this... I want to make sure that I can get my top one with the battery in place and the nipple, which we can do. Nothing worse than realising you've uh, you've taken it out too deep when it comes to uh, popping it all back together again. So that's good. I have uh, a plan of how to secure that nipple down inside. Now, unfortunately, it does involve epoxy resin and the liquid stuff, which I hate. Um, so I'll probably be doing that off camera, um, but what I'm going to do in the meantime is literally I'm going to tack a wire just onto our POS thread or our POS pin down in there. Let me see if we can get down. I'm not sure how far we can go. Probably about there. So I've just got my little POS pin here. Um, now what I'm going to do, I've already tinned this up and I've, I've tinned up the wire that it's going on. 
Now we don't want our battery to be interrupted by the wire um, so what I've done is I've left this loose strand as in I've tinned this up without twisting the wire. What that enables me to do when I put this on is essentially right on the edge of there and if I just push down with that I can spread the strands. So the strands of wire are pretty much flat on there as you can see. So I'm not going to get any interruption from your battery from this wire and essentially I've run a little channel down inside that's going to pop up and pop up through to where my switch runs um, in here so let me just take that out whoa he's going to get used to this uh, this new camera one day so essentially I've got my little hole down in here somewhere that I need to get me wire up easier said than done I'll pop that up through now what I'm doing is I'm going to be leaving quite a lot of length on, on these wires um, so I can play with bits afterwards. I, it's nothing worse than leaving it short because I haven't got a clue what I'm doing, um, making this up as I go along. Uh, let me just pull this up with some pliers. So as you can see that's feeding through nicely. And now is the point really to, to not scratch any of your work. <laughs> so that's going to pull through and that will then drop down inside there it's going to go roughly dead centre and my channel that that's hollowed out to run into down in there that will sit in there nicely so essentially I've got enough there to position that in like so position it centre get it fixed in and then you'll see if I can get it in the channel the channel that I've hollowed out down in there is very difficult but that will run down inside that channel and then what that gives me is when this pops in this will go over there, it will push that wire down into the channel and my pos pin will be secured down in there. So it sounds like we've got a plan of sorts. I'm going to leave that with a little bit out, feed it back through. And what I need to do next is uh, test to see whether my uh, my theory on, on being able to solder this up has worked by taking off some of this um, this surround. Now I need to work out roughly where that's going to go. My channel's over this side, so as that slides in, I'm going to take it off pretty much this edge here. So let me just see if we can get some uh, some solder down on there. And as you can see, that solder straight away is taken to the uh, to the outside. So we should be able to get a wire in and run that pretty flat. Obviously we don't want to interrupt our where our battery's gonna go and just take a, a chunk of neg lead. Tin that up. And essentially I'm gonna be laying this in this channel here. And that's going to provide my negative feed for the battery. And just taking some off. And again, what I need to do is, is test that that isn't going to interrupt the, uh, the battery going through. So let's just pop that on the bench, drop that battery through, and it is. You can see straight away that blob of solder is stopping that. So I've got to. Uh, mold that around so it fits and goes through. What I'm going to do, I'm going to pop away, I'm going to get this uh, this nipple epoxied in which effectively is just filling this with a bit of the uh, with the resin epoxy, dropping it in place and securing it and holding it. It's going to take a while. While that's doing I'll just sort out, I can file down this so the battery's got a, a free, uh, free entry and exit jobby. Um, I will pop back into after this. When I left things last week, I just finished drilling out all the holes, all except the one for the USB connector, the awkward one, and that's the one I'm going to deal with now. So what I've done is I've marked out some masking tape, 
and I've put a hole, I've marked out where the hole, I want the hole to be. And I did that by simply popping the USB in place and shining light from the back so I could mark out the shadow of where the connector will be. So hopefully it should get it right. So I've got the Dremel as usual with the diamond type tip on it. So let's see if I can cut it out with it. Just a matter of basically pulling holes through and working our way around. So we've got something fairly close. At this point, I can probably remove the tape. general idea of what I need now. It's just a case of getting rid of the melted bits of plastic. So as usual just run the knife around the inside of the hole and the plastic should pretty much come away. So, so I'll pop the connector there to check, and as you can see, I need a bit out of this corner and a bit more off this side, but top and bottom are pretty much there. So, back to work. Enough. I do still need a bit off the top of this side and still a bit of the bottom corner now. We're getting very close. through and yeah, not the neatest possible job so if anybody can think of a better way of marking out and cutting out the hole for the USB connector please do let me know but it'll do for now so next job is going to be the usual I need to modify the battery holder so you can get your battery in and out without ripping everything apart which means removing these four holders. So I'll just run the knife straight down. And you can just pop them off. That's two of them. And 
across, always making sure you get your wires out of the way before you do this. As you really don't want to cut through them. So there we go. That's that ready to go in. And I'll sit nicely in there. So next job is to start with the soldering. So I've got the atomizer connector set up in the vase. And for this, I'm going to be using two different kinds of wire. I've got this thick 16 core wire, which I'm using for the atomizer and battery, things like that. And this thinner 8 core wire, which I'm using for the switches, because they're not going to be holding a lot of charge. They're just a logic switch on these boards. So it'll make life a lot easier with the thin wires. So I'll take my solder, turn up the tip, and then tin up. The atomizer connector. Like so. Okay, well, I'm back and uh, we've we've had some success. Effectively, I've glued my uh, my pos pin down in the bottom there. Um, obviously, got my wire coming through. That's going up here to the switch, uh, which I've cut off. I've got my neg now running through to my body that's now glued in place. Now, the one thing that I did sort of prove all the way through, uh, just snipping off some wire there. Bear with me while we go. Uh, a tick. I'm just going to strip this off, and obviously, I was proving this all the way through as, as I was gluing in. I've, I've had to cut out a couple of steps, but essentially, your tube was, was cut out, we had the angle, and it was just a simple case of feeding the wire in the channel outside of there and, and running this down, feed a glue inside and, and pop it down and, and let that set off. So that is now in there, the tube. Um, wire is, is running in the recess behind the tube that we cut in um, down there. So just want to prove um, with the beep test that we've got our continuity. So just on the wire there, touching it on the, the case there and obviously this case is now carrying the, the neg through to what will be going to the neg of my ATI wire. Just to check I haven't got any shorts, touch me pause pin on there and obviously nothing shorting. The, the one reason I did cut that, that pin back ever so slightly in there, as you can see, fits dead centre. The battery will now drop all the way in on top of there and you can hear that hit the bottom. So I know I'm going to get a good contact on there. The next bit that we need to do uh, is I'm going to start stripping down for, for my ATI connection on this end. Now I've drilled this hole quite deep so this will take up some of the wire as, as that goes back in but I don't want to leave too much so I'm just going to snip a little bit back off the outside there uh, and I just need to ever so carefully, sorry I have to do this off camera concentrating strip off the end bit there for me at the connection. And I'm trying, obviously, as I'm doing this, not not to damage the uh, the case in any way. Um, obviously, don't want to be doing that. And I'm just going to tin up now that wire. So he's got the shakes today. It's all nervous, nervous stuff. The next bit, obviously, I'm going to need a pause going through to my to my at connection. So I'm just going to feed my wire that I've got that's going through here to the switch see if I can get that down in the hole that we made running through there it might be easier if I go the other way and got in that way pop that through might have to just get some fine those pliers down in there to get that wire out oh, he's gonna come he's playing ball now this one that's going up here to the switch to the atty I'm not too worried about and I solder that up last so I can pull this back as I go because the switch is going to be the last thing to go in place. So I can effectively strip this one back 
bit too much out was. Strip this end back, twist it off and get it tinned up ready to uh, to connect our atomizer connection. Don't know why but I've been worried about putting this together. It might be something to do with the, my history and, and wood. Time to bring in the ATI connection and essentially what I'm going to do is screw this on top of an atomizer. We've done it before. The only difference being with, with this one, the way that I need to do this, I need to be quite quite fine on the uh, whoa, quite fine on the on the outer rim because obviously the outer rim is going to be going in, into the uh, into the wood and we've got to drive that home so I've got to be quite careful how I do that in I'm going to do my center pin the same now everything's exposed so this should be a damn sight easier blob on there and on the outer ring just get a tiny tad on my outer ring there now my outer ring wire, I'm just going to have to bring the, the mod in and I'm going to run that as close to the inside as I can and tap that on and because I've got a load on, on my, my pos pin here I can just effectively pop him on the top and solder that one in I don't know if you, you, you're seeing this so you just get me pos pin in. So effectively, that is my atty wired, ready to be pushed back home inside here. I've got to do a bit of jiggery pokery with these wires as I'm going, and I might have to take a bit of that off with a file. So I'm going to go away. And effectively what I'm doing with this outside is just not getting this back with a file so it will go in, might as well do it while we're here. Just running a file over the solder because it's going to be a tight fit as it is. I'll continue to file, get it to a position where it fits and I'll pop back in two. And there we go, our first little section uh, over. Um, obviously, uh, Marks is coming on very well as well, the, the lava box, and uh, and we will finish off both mods tonight. So next week we will be on to something completely fresh. We have some ideas on that, and, uh, and I'll tell you a little bit more about that after this first air break. Liberty Flight sponsors 10-Year Tip with Gary Dibley. time to speak which makes a change um, so yes after after this week we're on to new mods and uh, we did th throw some ideas around the team and the response we got back was maybe we should do a show um, called the uh, the hairy naked modders um, I'm not sure that would go down very well um, I'm not even going to attempt to do that to be honest with you 
I was thinking, um, and I just need a quick eye from the guys that are in chat. Uh, would anybody in chat be up for uh, challenge the audience? Um, maybe thinking of of getting a kit together, um, picking somebody at random from from our live viewership, and uh, and sending them a kit that maybe they could possibly video uh, making a mod. Um, hit it, guys. Yes, we we have some eyes coming in. Um, now, what I'm going to do is on our next little ad break I'm going to have a have a little look through through our audience and and see if anybody out there would would fancy um, and I'm just going to pick somebody at random from our audience to send some kit through um, with the instructions on something that we've done before um, and see what you can come up with um, doesn't even you don't even have to film it even if you took photographs through the steps uh, that would be good um, with all that said let's get on with our next little step and I've got to find the damn video because I've lost it um, going back with Mark's little uh, lava box Take the wires which I've pre tinned. And my hands went all over the place. Just pop the positive in there. And the negative against the side. Just want to solder on the solder in. And we're having a disaster. this and they're the two connectors for the atomizer which I'm not going to touch at the moment because if I take these off I will completely forget which way we go so the next job is the fiddly one I need to solder on a couple of wires to the switches now I know that the ends of the switches are what switch across and that way this they're connected I want one on each of these two and one on each of these two, which is going to be a nightmare. So, just the sort of nine slightly. That's better. So, that's one. The problem we've got here is there's two little points here and there for the actual firing switch. And the right way I really want to lay this way. So Should try it once more. I 
have to go back to with that one. So I've managed to solder the wires on. Put two on the back for the switch. And there's two coming off this one, as you saw. And I've decided to go for the negative the down power down button instead. So I've got two wires coming off the side of there. As there's not really enough room to get in here. So now it's time to solder up the switches. So let's pop a bit of solder out. And I know from experience that I want the two on the same side for this. So that is one. And it wants to run away. I might find it easier if you've got a set of helping hands or something similar to hold it in place while you're working. Because working in mid-air like this is not easy. So that's one of those switches done. Oops, it's done. Now these two are for the switch that will go into the side hole. They can wait till I've got it in place. So now it's pretty much time to put it all together. So that will go in there with a that quick dab of super glue. this rather a tight fit. Slight miscalculation there, but now I mean. Now next, one thing I forgot to solder up is this. Right, well I've just been seating home. Uh, I've filed off the excess solder and I've just been seating home. And what I've done to do that is just with a, uh, a big old mallet, um, attached it on there and I've driven that home with ever such a, a little bit of, uh, of glue. Not much because it's a, an absolute tight fit in there anyway. Um, my next stage, uh, because I've got my, my what, two wires coming through now, final stage realistically in this process is to uh, is to test the switch now I've already done a continuity test on the switch um, and what I just need to do very very quickly is tin up the uh, the terminals of this switch and I'm going to bring in my two wires from from the from the mod that will attach to the switch and just drop those on ever so slightly for the moment I may well keep them this long, I'm not, I'm not sure. If they drop down inside uninterrupted, I may keep them that long. I know some people will moan and say, you shouldn't do that, but, uh, but I may well do. I'm not sure. If it fits, it fits. Point is breaking it. Um, what I'm going to do now is just test. So I'm going to pop a, uh, a battery in and screw the cap on. Once you get this thread, pop the battery in. I'm going to pop an Etty on and just give it a test fire. We're working. Now I know people say you shouldn't leave a lot of a lot of wire dingly dangling. But if I can feed these down inside there, I know damn well that is going to sit in there quite happily. Um, it's not going to chill, it's not going to touch anything. So what I might very quickly do, 
is, and I don't want this to be, if you like, a permanently permanent permanent fix, but just to hold it in place ever so slightly, I'm going to drop a bead, ever so slight bead of glue, just down in the top, in there. Now I know that I can crack this out if I need to at any point, so I'm just going to drop a tiny bit of glue in there, feed me wires down inside, and push that switch home. Like so. So we are effectively, effectively, he says, looking at a finished mod. Let's pop a battery in once again. And let's come out. Now I'm going to have to do some polishing on, on me, me caps and everything, um, these jobbies. But and I still haven't got round to ordering my kick. And this Atty is pretty naked, this on here. But it fires. Not extremely well with this Atty, because this Atty's been done to death. But. We're firing. What I'm going to do, pop away, I'll come back in two. And we'll show you some of the possibilities with our with our little bit of, uh, of bench woodiness that we've built. Um, come back in two. Right. So as we've seen, we've got our our working mod at this moment in time. Now I'm going to use this because my it looks like a Dalek, <laughs> but my uh, my tanks need need new atties in. Um, and rework in and all sorts, but in 18.350 mode we're vaping well. Now what this gives us the ability to do, because we've used effectively our our VAMO tube down in there, we can take our cap off, pop our 18.350 battery out we can use our extension cap that we would get on the bottom end of, of the uh, of the VAMO. Simply screw them on the top and you've got a uh, 18650 mod ready to roll in your little tubing. Now that does make it look extremely large um, but when you've got your, your tank on I'm quite liking that. Easy to hold in the hand, um, and for me, it's a, a a bench unit. Now, with with the 18650 tube on, obviously you could put a 18500 uh, battery in there and a kick, and it'll all work rather nicely. Now, I don't have a kick, as I said, I totally forgot to order my kick. I was going to get one in, um, but in terms of a uh, a mod from the spores of the Vamo. I didn't think we did too bad. Um, I've been slightly impressed with this one. It feels really, really nice. Really nice to hold. It's, it's perfect for, for my hand positioning. And if you want to go around that way and grip that and do that, it's, it's whatever. But there we go. Rather uh, rather funky, I think. Uh, totally different to anything I've seen. Um, but there we go. In essence, this is our... Uh, our tree mod uh, now completed. Now I'm going to try and vape off this dead carto, which is currently running at God knows how many watts, and it needs replacing. But even in 18650 mode with an half dead carto, that's nice. Very nice. Could, could Dibley finally have conquered his wood fear? Could he? We don't know. If you've got a Vamo that you've taken apart and you've used for for modding, why not have a crack at this? It's uh, most, as you can see, ninety percent of the work is actually in the um, in the woodworking. 
the wiring portion of it is very very simple um, it is you know straight through as long as you get your your connections right in the bottom you use your body for your earth you shouldn't have any issues with that now I'm I'm gonna this is one that's gonna sit on the bench and uh, I will probably use that most evenings I think it looks rather good I um, may have said that quite a lot but uh, one final zoom down and there we go don't know what to call it woody vamo guts or something there we go names on a postcard uh, with all that said, it is back to me in the studio, where next week, God only knows what we will be attempting. Um, but I hope you've enjoyed seeing this one. Um, it's been an absolute pleasure to make. Uh, it's it's one that that, um, that has, has taken a lot, a lot of work for a very small mod. And I can fully understand now why the guys who, who sell these wood mods um, <laughs> charge what they do for them because they are good and, and they feel nice. They feel very nice, um, especially when you mold them to your own hand. But there we go, back to me in the studio once again. And there we go. And thank you very much for all the nice comments that come through in chat. I am very, very proud of that. Uh, it took a lot of hard work. Um, it took skin, bone, and uh, God knows what else with it. But one of the things I did I did see in there, um, which I, I see a name for it, um, and and we're going to call it Stumpy, uh, like that one. Uh, so Mad Ray, I believe, come up with that. Um, no, he didn't. Midge Dog. Uh, so Stumpy is called Stumpy. With all that said, let's go into our second little ad break if I can find them, and uh, we'll pop back very shortly after this. Liberty Flight sponsors 10-Year Tip with Gary Dibley. Sponsors 10 Year Tip with Gary Dibley. And they go oh so quickly. Um, and yes, I did have a, uh, a little idea um, earlier that we were going to we're going to challenge challenge chat um, on the mod making. Now we were going to call this challenge Sav, but she did uh, she backed away very very rapidly um i would like and 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 this is this is the the choice that, that whoever gets this little task will will undertake we're gonna have a look at uh, potentially sending out a kit to make a pipe pass through all things we've done on the show a tin mod with uh, with vv with a display um standard box mod or the torch mod we did a little while ago and if you're up for this the person that, that i have randomly picked from chat to do this is rat Finks. Now, if you're up for that, I think, drop me a PM after the show. Um, tell me what you would uh, like to have a crack at, and uh, and I'll send you a kit. Um, all you've got to do is send us a little vid or a couple of pictures along the way, following the instructions. Happy days. Um, lots and lots and lots and lots to get through. Um, let's have a look at Mark's final bit of his, uh, of his lava box. Let's start with a negative. Negative in place and uh, positive. Okay. 
just wants to sit down there like that. And you're done. So I've had a look at the connector and it is I'm gonna write on camera, slightly raised. I'm gonna leave it as that. Yeah, because it's gonna to be too difficult to get it back out. Or oh, B, I'm probably gonna break something trying to move it. And it won't do any harm having it raised up slightly. So all that's left to do now is just finish off the bits of soldering. So we've got the power going to the USB which will charge the battery and from there I've got two connections which will connect to this board. Now the first one is going to be a nice simple connection on the bottom. Hopefully. Melt the solder, that's set, and there you go. And the other one, the negative, is up here on the side of the board, which was originally touching the tube. So I'm just going to tin up this wire a bit. this one off to the side of here. Just like that. Now, the only ones that's left to do is the two for the atomizer connector and the two for the switch. The switch ones I'll do very last once I've put the switch in place, I'll just solder to it. So, these two wires now need to come off. Remember that the positive is on the right, negative is on the left. Hold it while it cools down and you're done. And we're done. So basically that's everything in place now. So I'll just pop a battery in. And immediately the display lights up. If I press this button the voltage should drop, which it is. Now I press this button five times. No, six times. We got if the radio you know, four volts in the battery, so I know that part's working. Nobody know the USB will be fine because everything's connected. So we're good to go. All that remains now is to pop all the bits in and glue it all together. Oh, and so these last two connections. I'm going to use liquid air, uh, two-part clear epoxy, as usual. Because it's a clear case, the black epoxy wouldn't look so good, so I'm going to run some clear epoxy on the bottom of here to hold all the components in. And I'll probably just super glue the two switches in place, and that one just screws in and holds I'll be back when I get all that sorted. So here we go, I've added the switch and soldered that up and I've, layer, I've added a layer of epoxy to the base so everything's held in the epoxy now and hopefully with these super glued in place it should be perfect. I've had to make a slight adjustment to the lid, camera. I've just 
grooved out a slight section around the lip because the nut for the switch is just in the way. No problem, that should just be a matter of popping it on. It sits nicely now. So I need to screw in the screws at some point to so seal it all up. Before I do that, I'm going to test it out. So the bottom button is going to be the voltage down. And if I get rid of that light, should be able to see there, there's the voltage currently. And press the down button, it goes down all the way down to the 3 volts and then back up to the 6. And if you press the other button, power button, 5 times, like okay, 6 times, uh, it tells you the voltage in the battery which is currently 4.1 so now I need to have a quick check make sure that the USB is working also so I'll plug that in and as you'll see there's a nice blue light there which means it's charged so I'm good to go there and I suppose last thing to check is that it actually vapes so my usual compromiser on there. As you can see, bring the light back. You'll be able to see that there is a slight gap between the two. That doesn't mean I get airflow. So press the button. A nice healthy crackle. So we're good to go. Okay, so in between um, filming the show and sort of editing and putting final bits together, I made a little, what I'm going to call the Oki, um, which has got a, uh, it's not fully made, I'm, I'm just staying in the wood. So, side switch, uh, this would come up at you. Um, and back on the top. Now this one is made from the, uh, as you can see, the Atti connection just fell out. Um, but this one is made from the back end of a, uh, a little indulgence um, and I've managed to do this one so I've hollowed it right the way through so effectively where my switch will go goes through into the cavity for the uh, tube so I can get my neg feed off there and again my atty will go it drills right the way through to the switch cavity and you can see my thingy going in there um, and I thought I'd, I'd just give it a bash you know, a nice little quickie see how it goes so that will go to give like there something like that on the switch switch going in there out your connection going in there it needs a lot more rubbing and treating but uh, this one's done from uh, a little off cut of oak I had um, and I was sort of thinking that would be nice just to uh, you know hold the top and you can pretty much vape it like that in your face and set it down on the table like that so just a little update, you know, that if you've got a mod that you're not using, um, you know, or even a broken old thing, you can you can embed the the battery connection bit in some wood. Nice and simple. Happy days. There we go. This one will be also being glued together in bits and pieces on Sunday. Uh, it's getting late now on Saturday. Um, it takes a, a long time to work out these holes, I can tell you. But uh, yes. A little update. So we've we've done cherry, meat oki. There we go, oki koki. Talk to you in a bit. Bye. Entirely got caught out by that. And yes, oki is now glued together, as as is as is stumpy. Um, and uh, yes, we've we've done lots. Sorry, I've got to kill the other screen because for some reason it's just become live and it's totally throwing me out. Um, the way that I was thinking of working this, uh, Ratfinks has has won the challenge, and uh, I'll let him know, uh, or he can let me know what he fancies having a crack at. Um, as I said, we we got the pipe the, the pipe pass through. We got a VV tin mod with display, uh, a standard box mod, or a torch mod. All been made on the show. All the instructions are there, and I will provide all of the parts uh, to make the mod. Um, the way this will work once Ratfinks has has actually sort of uh, done his bit. Um, 
he will be able to pick live uh, during when he finishes. He will be able to pick the next recipient of of a mod kit. Uh, from the chat so uh, hopefully that's where it's going to work sort of like a pay it forward for, for modding kits all we ask if you can if you, if you don't want to film it just take some photos of the process if you need any help contact me I will sort you as would Mark no doubt um, it's been a I've enjoyed tonight uh, it's been good um, God only knows what we're going to do next week but uh, Phil I believe has, has, has made a very kind offer uh, to the team and uh, and no doubt either myself or Mark will be contacting him Give us a PM, um, remind us, because after this we have to do all the uploady stuff. What I'm going to do very, very quickly um, before I, I was going to say before I pass away, um, before I slip away tonight, um, I've, I've put together, if you like, a little compilation of of the uh, of the wood mod because it was done over uh, such a amount of time and narrowed it down very, very, very quickly just so you can see, if you like, uh, tree to mod in a few simple steps. Um, after that, I will end the show and go straight in, into the uh, into the end credits. Um, but it's been emotional tonight as usual. Thank you very, very much for everybody for, for tuning in. Um, I'm sure uh, if you have any ideas that you, you know, mods you want to see or things you want to, you know, you want to see on the show, let us know and we will do our best to, to, to sort of uh, facilitate your requests. With all that said, I'm not going to end yet. I'm going to play this out, then the credits. Thank you very much. Good night, guys. Tim, your tip with Gary Dibley.